Welcome to the Gathered Ass for BDS versus Fnatic. I'm Draco, joined by Kadrill and Vetti. And uh, it's a big one. Obviously playing for top three, playing for Montpellier. The loser will get a chance to qualify for Worlds later this year at the World Qualifying Series, but big stakes for both sides. Yeah, I'm really excited for this matchup. Our expectations are, I was kind of surprised to see so many in favor of BDS from the analysts that's coming into this series. Kind of my instincts would say that Fnatic should be coming in as the favorites, but I guess we'll have to wait and see as we're jumping into draft. BDS on the blue side on already these bands coming thick and fast. Yeah, Talia Poppy taken away there. So Zeri looking at things like the Zyra Khan now as well, especially Rel taken away. Maokai still in availability. And I think Ivern for both these junglers is oh, going to yeah. be a high prior pick. Definitely for sure. Curious with the amount of bands we've already seen come through, if any of the 80 mid laners are going to be targeted. Humanoid has essentially had his pick of the litter through the entire season finals thus far. Tristana will be banned. BDS, do they want to try to take the Jace away, or are they willing to give it up? Is <laughs> the old Adam, unsurprisingly, going to hit Wonder with some cheeky hovers. Wonder's laughing it off as well. The infamous scrim game that everyone was talking about, but there's the Ivan to no one's surprise. So is Wonder going to give I mean, it to him back? To, he has to respond. <laughs> Just locks in Yubi. <laughs> 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 Adam's cheeky little smile as well. I mean, the mental warfare begins before draft. Yeah. You know, like it, whoever like gets it. the first kill in this is top flash up. Like <laughs> one solo kill, that's it. It's over. All right, the Jace. Ooh, oh, Karthus. 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 So okay. We saw um, Yike go for Evelyn into Ivern because you don't get punished. Free farm. We talked to him on Euphoria. That's the idea. Karthus is the exact same kind of jungler that just wants to be left alone to free farm. So up against an Ivern, that should be a nice matchup for him. The shields will be really annoying to deal with, but first strike, something along those lines, just power farm and have double AD solo laners. I mean, I'd heard a lot about it in scrims, but I wasn't sure whether or not it did actually come into reality. So now we get to see some scrim Razzle, hopefully on stage, with the LeBlanc immediately responded from Nuke and Renekton. Ah. already two That's very things. powerful solo laners from the side of BDS, but not a lot of potential setup with the Ivan, yeah. a little bit more scaling. There it is, Wunder comes in, just locks in his Orn. <laughs> there it is. The, guy, the man everyone was waiting to see. What's he gonna, he's gonna play Orn. Yeah. yeah. I've, uh, I've played cards on stage a few times in like 2020, and this champ is really powerful, but it, it really sucks into champions with dashes. Like LeBlanc, Renekton, LeBlanc just W's forwards, chunks half your HP, and now you can't fight. As much as you wanna die in fights on Karthus against poke or ranged champs with dashes, it's really difficult. So I think this LeBlanc pick was a huge uh, pickup for BDS. Can be pressure on Nuke to pilot it well. See as well what Adam could do on the blind pick. Renekton, uh, champion in terms of win rate, hasn't been the most successful. But when it comes to blind picking top lane in general, obviously not always going to have the biggest numbers. For now, though, no AD carries picked up yet, which makes it a uh, perfect spot to start focusing these bands. The Sivir taken away from Crowny. The Callista from Noah and Trimby, they showed it in their final game versus Excel last week. You have to imagine that the Aphelios can be taken away from Noah from the side of BDS. Has been his comfort pretty much throughout summer. Fnatic though, what do they want to target on the side of Crowny with Sivir taken off the board, Zeri also removed the Nyla. We saw that a lot in the EU Masters semi-finals last night. A very impactful pick, but that's not going to be in the hands of Crowny today. I would love a Lucian lane from Fnatic or something that can be like really aggressive AD heavy. You know, Kai'Sa wouldn't strike me as the best pick in that sense. I mean, AD Kai'Sa can work. Aphelios would be a Noah classic, uh, but I think something that can all in like Lucian would be nice. BDS can look for those poke champions into Karthus that just makes his life really annoying. Something like Varus could work, but the Orn is a bit of a struggle. Ezreal would be nice. That does really well into Karthus yeah. as well and Orn, uh, but you have to be careful of it, that Kai'Sa. Is there pressure on anything like a Braum? It appears the answer is no. Instead, said the Kai'Sa going to be the priority. Yeah, Ezreal would do so well. It, it just it just really sucks into Kai'Sa. So I think Fnatic are saying you're probably going to pick Ezreal here or Varus. So if we pre-pick Kai'Sa here, it's going to be a bit of a rough matchup because we have counter pick support as well. But the champion itself does well against Karthus. Uh, Brown. Yeah, they can do the Cogmore Brown. Rakan is banned, so the Brown blind pick will come through here, I think. Yeah, there it is. Some inspiration from G2. It was often their answer into the Kaiser, and uh, we'll see it in the hands of Crowny. Obviously, a lot of criticism has been thrown towards him because he has been dubbed as a Zeri one trick as his primary champion of choice so far this split. And outside of that, he hasn't had the strongest of performances or a little bit more inconsistent, I should say. Yeah. But how will Fnatic now round out this draft? <laughs> we can hit Karthus and Sark on the same team. <laughs> can you imagine the. The that team fights would be so funny, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine the absolute lack of engage as well, which is I feel like Trimby's hand is kind of oh, forced I... here to go for another champion. This pairs well with the Kai'Sa, but laning against a Kog'Maw Braum as these two champions is gonna suck. BDS G2, I think it was Mickey who had to play Nautilus into Braum Ivern, and he just couldn't play. There was nothing he could do, and in team fights, it's gonna really suck for him. 3v3 is gonna be a bit of a struggle too. But you need lanes that can follow up. If the cards gets invaded, you need to collapse on them. You need to have early skirmishing power, and Fnatic definitely have that. But I think that BDS have built a pretty strong draft against Fnatic's in terms of good scaling, 
good ma managing of the uh, the cards jungle in the early stages and lanes that can actually start to contest. I would say the thing that has surprised me from BDS is this priority on the LeBlanc from Nuke, something we don't typically see. We usually see a lot of things like Azia, Cassio, more of those scaling mid laners, but going for a little bit more early power, perhaps more roaming, perhaps more agency to look towards these side lanes. Uh, we'll see what BDS can make happen in the early game if they choose to play that way. Meanwhile, Fnatic, as you rightly said, while they do have a little bit more lockdown with the Nautilus onto these mobile carries, I am a little worried about their access onto this back lane. How much free-flowing damage is this Cogmore going to be able to dish out? I'm excited for this one. We've seen some yeah. different things from both BDS and Fnatic. A lot of questions going to be answered in this game. I think the other big one for me is Ivern. You know, we've seen AP champions come out. Cajal, you already highlighted the Evelyn. This is another AP option into the Ivern that can, in theory, get through the early game uncontested and scale. But will it work, or will we see yet another counter pick? You know, fall at the hands of Ivern, who has just been so incredibly consistent. And in a similar vein, can we see Wonder deal with Adam on the top side of the map? In past years, you might have put this matchup very much in the favor of Wonder. The times have changed. Adam absolutely lethal on that top side. We'll see what he can do as we get into game one. PDS versus Fnatic. This is a massive opportunity for Wonder, showcasing what he can do. As a reminder that both these teams, right now, Guaranteed top four in the LEC. So they will either be going as, at a minimum, Europe's third seed to the World Championship, or they will qualify as the fourth seed and go up against Golden Guardians at the uh, World Championship qualifying series. Um, so the loser today will go up against Golden Guardians, and the winner will be able to take a shot at either MAD or G2. Yeah, I think we have a nice graphic. Just remind people. We don't. That's fine. <laughs> nope, there it was. All right, well, look. Well, we're... I'm getting the rust off over here on the graphics machine. We'll have to hope that the same is true for Wonder. You're going to hear us talk about this story a lot today. There are more important points on the map because that is an Orn versus Renekton lane. But in terms of hype, in terms of personality, nothing is more interesting than top lane. These two guys have obviously played against each other a ton. The difference in experience, pretty staggering. But again, Adam, a player you can't help but look away from, has gotten better and better. I think this has been his best year in his career thus far. And see, it all comes up to taking down an old rival. <laughs> Which I think that that might be a bit outdated, but it's say still grudge good. match. Go and say it for me. Yeah. <laughs> grudge match. There we go. Where's Odo? We get it's him up here to say. It's an interesting uh, path for redemption for Adam, right? You think about the player that he was when he first joined the league versus the player that he's at now. He's humbled himself pretty significantly, and as you rightly said, his growth has been very dramatic. But a lot on the line here in today's series, having to go against one of his up against one of his former rivals. We'll see how he performs. Uh, meanwhile, we're looking across the map. Kedro, often we look to you when we think about jungle pathing. Razork. What do you think of what he's doing so far? I'm surprised. He's gone Raptors into blue. And uh, I was looking at the map to see if there's a reason that he's gone for something like this. But um, there's no wards. I mean, I, I looked at that Crux ward there, but they didn't actually see it in that, that ward place. So I thought maybe he's going one side to make it so that he can go Raptors into blue, scale up, and then the Crux ward will expire by the time he gets there. If he does red Crux, he'll get spotted. Uh, but this is a very fast level three. You know, Raptors blue into Grom, and they can clear back up, get red buff. Um, it's interesting because he's against Ivern, so he's not actually doing buff to buff. Sometimes against Ivern, he likes to do something like Red Raptors into Gromp and then do Blue and then Wolves and then go for Crux later. Um, but yeah, Raptors respawning is really important on the early stages. It looks like he should be able to get his red uncontested, and that Crux ward will expire by the time he gets there, I think, so that'll be lucky for him. But uh, yeah, I think for Karthus, it's just a case of full clearing, and yeah. whichever side has the push, get a crab from it. So pathing away from both is important. Brown lane will always get pushed into Nozzles of Korkmore. Does that ward expire in time? Couple seconds. Yeah. Nah, it's season. You gotta get the information that they need to know exactly where Karthus is. We'll see if Shio wants to respond by putting some pressure on the bottom side, but it seems like both sides pretty content just power farming through. We heard in the video right before the start of this match, Razor cracking jokes, kind of taking shots at Crowny. I'll just go bot. We'll tilt him. It'll make the series easy. But I, against the Brom Kogma, I don't. And as Karthus, I don't think this is the game where we're going to get to see that. I think the problem for Razork right now, he's based, right? You know why he's done that? Both his side lanes are just getting pushed into tower and playthings are like being threatened already. There's no way he can walk into either side of the river. Maybe he hooks onto uh, Lebrov there, but you can see the power of the Unbreakable just sitting there. And if he walks into the Ivern, he's just going to get chased down. He's going to play calm, collected. He's going to take his time. Right now he's going to run bot and he's going to run face first into this Ivern. He's pushing lanes as he already highlighted, Cage, but are a problem for him. He's queuing bushes on the face check. Now he'll see the crab and he can low. Well, I'll go to top crab. Puts a ward down, but he needs to be careful of bot dives as well. So managing both lanes getting pushed in 
while also being wary of like covering lanes for Karthus is really not a good spot to be in. This is yeah. the second time we've seen someone against BDS pull out an Ivern counter pick, but then not have any lane prio, and we watch that counter pick get invaded and not be able to do anything early game. Well, and Karthus, I mean, we wait for six, we wait for Sork shoes, we wait for an item, you know, a lot of that early penetration is good, but quiet from the early games against these Ivers. One of the biggest differences was we saw that Evelyn basically just die. We saw Yike make some um, he died mistakes twice. that he shouldn't yeah. be making, really. And I think the BDS were able to successfully punish him for some of the decisions that he's made. But as Kajal is highlighting for us, Razok is being very aware of what he can and cannot do right now. He's managed to get the second clear of his Raptors. He's also gotten the top crab. And uh, he's farming very well. He's on good pace right now. Uh, and the problem he's now going to run into is the bot side of his map is completely lit up with vision. The mid is being pushed in, the bot is being pushed in. Of course, Ivan is moving away from this side of the map. Yeah. Braum could go in and potentially be a nuisance. Yeah, it's big pace, really good clear so far. And, and the, the thing is, as much as the lane will get pushed, like I think Jason DeBlanc, maybe Humanoid if he wants to, can start contesting the wave. His jungler can never help him. They're going to lose probably a lot of 2v2s, and if he pushes up without phase rush and gets chained, he's going to die, and his card just wants to farm. So sometimes you have lanes that can get prior, but they have to give it up because their jungler's just weaker, and I think that's what you're seeing here. I think Razork's kind of lucky that he got that top grab. Shio was maybe looking for a bot dive, but there wasn't an option. But they've got complete vision of this card this the entire game, so Adam can just do things like this. And Adam just taking his time there. You can see he doesn't really need his cooldowns for anything. The gank now coming through on the bottom side. The Trippy's already dead. You can now walk into a cog. Braum like that. Can they get one back? They turn the flash out from LeBron. The W body blocked by Crowny. Clean play from the BDS bottom lane. Fnatic trying way too hard to force that play on the bottom side. Yeah, BDS knew exactly what was going on. Razork was on a pink the whole time doing that Grom. They saw him lean into bot side. Trying to stop the wave crashing there whilst Razork maybe look for a, a flash out of the Cogmore or something, but it's Cogmore Braum level 4. They're just going to murder straight through this Nautilus. I think Trimby can do. He also used his W earlier on, so he doesn't even have a shield. No heal either. Stunned up, dead. LeBron wants all the damage. Cranny was low on mana. Maybe they were optimistic in that regard, but easy punish from the BDS bot lane. They haven't had an opportunity to base yet. The wave's in an okay state. They're going to look to recall now. Trimby out on the roam. Right, he's not going to be able to find anything here. You can see Humanoid was also moving from mid. The Hex flash over the wall. But again, I don't... Not really a lot to grab here. Of course, it doesn't cost him a lot to just show presence on the top side of the map as the wave isn't really in a position where he and Noah could contest it anyway. Karm and Braun will get back to the lane, so tries to use that opportunity or that window of opportunity to get some pressure down on the map. Does not amount to a whole lot as human rights do. Continue to trade blows here. But overall, you know, Fnatic out the gate, very difficult early game. We'll have to see if that starts to shift as Humanoids ticked over to six, Wonder at six, Raz are getting closer and closer to six. Those levels are going to be very important. But right now, BDS kind of just doing whatever they want on the map. Yeah, I think the other problem is, as much as the, the draft around cards is okay by Fnatic, Wonder's just going to eat through there. There's no lanes that can kill. You know, the Cogmore Braum is never going to fall to a kill against the, the Nautilus lane in a 2v2. You really want a lane like a Renekton into, into a Jace lane, you know, where you can have the Renekton just all in level 6, try and get his flash, and then just ult to finish off or something. His ult's really not going to be that useful this game, I feel like, until team fights come. There's no real lanes that he can threaten his ultimate with a volatile kill. Here we go. Another Conqueror for another proc on the tower. Demolish proc as Razork now forced to flash out to safety. Not having that is going to make him incredibly vulnerable in any upcoming fights. An easy target, of course, dying early in a fight. Not the worst thing for Karthus, as he has the luxury of the passive, but the stage, easy drag. Can test now for BDS with full lane priority. And this should come as no surprise to anyone. BDS have been one of our better objective-focused teams. Uh, particularly Dragons, BDS are have a high priority of securing them. You just look at when in their wins, they're able to secure a lot of dragons. Uh, and obviously the barons kind of are associated with that as well. But those are the, those dragon percentages in particular, BDS is a very dragon focused team. So I'm excited, especially to see these dragon fights because later on, Fnatic is building a composition that's kind of designed to fight around these dragons once they get their first, second items through. But yeah. BDS is just a team that loves to contest you at dragons regard. We're watching the pings on the minimap and BDS have been pinging Rasworks exact pathing perfectly this whole game. They just ping that you'll be going Grump Wolves into Raptors Red. And they know where he is the entire game. I mean, Shio's had both side wards the entirety of the game. You see him there, you don't see him there, you know he's topside. And they can just track every single move that he's looking towards. And a Herald fight would be great, but the Cartus isn't that strong yet. And if he gets hit by a Brown Q or an Ivern Q, he's dead. And they don't have that much peel. And his comp only really pokes and goes forwards. It's definitely an incredibly tricky game. As you highlighted already, not a ton of kill pressure in the lanes individually either, so hopes of getting an early Requiem to maybe snowball that Karthus further are limited. Very often when we used to see Karthus in pro play, it was about double magic pen items and level 11, where you really started to take over the game. And 
We're going to have to wait a long time for that at this point because there's nothing to really snowball the Karthus going on right now. Look at top lane. This is almost four plates in a 1v1 because Adam knows the enemy jungler. There is there is no jungler. The amount of vision tracking they've got, he knows his windows well. I think Razork saying, I'm going to give up Herald. Braum has no flash. Let's just try to gank bot. That looks like the Fnatic play right now. Maybe they can get the kill onto the Braum. But the wave's already crashed, and as much as they want to hold it here, BDS know they're getting a free Herald, so they're not giving anything on the cross map. Respecting it. Incredibly well played from BDS in the early game. Fantastic demonstration of how powerful information can be. Be careful not to get too, too greedy. And, uh, if nothing else, they're just wasting a lot of Razor's time right now. Crowny is pretty low on mana. But with no level 6 yet for Trippy, he's going to take over it soon. It's such a tricky situation, though, for Fnatic, because they've already up, lost right? so much on the map. Yeah, it feels no like way. they might have to force something to get something back. Instead, it's just going to be Krugs, essentially traded for a Herald. So overall, terrible deal for Fnatic here in the early game. I think Fnatic's early games were really driven by Razork on early playmakers. Think back to like the oh, last yeah. time they played against the Viego. He was just a menace across the whole map. I He's mean, so like... He can't really do much with the Karthus. He's so muted in terms of how much pressure he can have on the map. I wonder if coming into this series, Fnatic was like, well, BDS have a tendency to always draft for scaling. So why don't we just match them in scaling and then we'll beat them in the late game, right? But that's not to say that BDS don't use early game information to build advantages. Their laners are still reliable and consistent, and they're playing around this pressure well. And I, again, I think this LeBlanc pick may have caught Fnatic off guard, because Duke is doing a great job on a pick we don't often see him on. The static shiv now completed means that he's going to have a lot more agency to start roaming around the map, moving into Fog of War, and working with Shadow to start putting more pressure onto Razzle in the jungle. I think they knew they were giving over the Ivern in game one with those bands, oh, and sure. they probably pre-planned. Let's pick hearts into it, see how it goes. Maybe it worked in a scrim game. Right now, it's not looking great, especially if Noah goes for an AP Kai'Sa build. When you're Karthus, you want full AD on your team, so you can just go Magic Pen and just full damage. Right now, he's going to have to go something like Leandris, it looks like, and just... I mean, Ornn is also kind of mixed, mostly more towards Magic as well, so Nautilus too. This isn't, this isn't the ideal draft for Karthus to function in. No Tristana lanes to all in. Um, and again, Karthus really struggles at fighting only Drake, so they're going to have to give up the next one soon, I think, in the next 1 minute 30. If he gets his Mythic here, Razork, they can try to force, but yeah, dangerous, because these lanes are just constantly pushing in. Yeah, difficult as you can see, Adam just continues to bully Wonder on the top side. Wonder has just been catching waves this entire game. Maybe the first few levels he got to fight back a bit, but otherwise he's been on the back foot. Gore Drinker, that sustain, making it essentially impossible for him to get Adam out of lane. Ward behind didn't get seen by uh, by the BDS bot lane. They swept the one in the alcove, but they didn't sweep that one. I think Fnatic was pinging it. Maybe they're just going to commit to a double TP Look play soon. Otherwise, this is going to become a problem. No, we're taking a huge chunk of damage to kick things off, though. Thunder. Can they TP behind this though? I feel they're like they're gonna lose so they, many. They, they have to though. They're gonna, they're gonna bleed. They're gonna put Herald down. They're gonna just gonna bleed playthings. That ward is their only playtimer. Humanoids basing to look for it, I think. But Wunder's gonna have to stop Adam or join sooner. The second that cannon's down, maybe they just try to force it. But it's still gonna cost them a lot just to even try to make the play. It's, it's a TP mid. mid. Gone, yeah, yeah. The play is gone. BDS are just choking Fnatic out of this game, and Fnatic certainly put themselves in a bit of a difficult situation with the draft, but BDS playing this phenomenally. Betty, you already highlighted it. Discipline around vision control, not giving any avenues of attack to Razork here, and slow and steady has definitely been winning the race. Could we see the Fnatic vision right now? Because I can promise you it's an absolute disaster. Like, if Kogmo Bram just pushes waves and goes into fog, you can never make that TP play. They're just hiding in this bot side river, threatening moves towards mid, threatening invades on Razor. Trimby has to cover, then they go back to the wave when Trimby's covering his jungler, push it in again, and soon they'll start Drake. So this rinse and repeat, you have to make a play to break through it so you can get vision in their jungle and clear out your own vision, uh, their vision in yours. So it's just on Fnatic. When are they going to make this TP play happen? They're bleeding a top tower, it's gone. They may as well just go for it. <laughs> wow. I mean, huge credit to BDS. The way they're playing this other game is immaculate so far. They've given no window for Fnatic. The only one available to them is the one that cable has been talking about for the last, what, two, three minutes now? It's just LeBlanc has TP advantage as well now. Yep. So it's just if you make that play, it's going to backfire. But yeah, top tower is gone. When's the next play, really? Because it's not going to be this dragon, I think. Shear just going to go solo, start this one up. Fnatic, no priority on the bottom side of the map means that, again, to even walk into this pit means giving up a couple hundred gold. They will clear the wave and take their time here. Can now finally peek their head in and see what's going on. But it's five members of BDS with TPs up and available. They can return to their lane or just it. turn and fight. Rather than coming in on the side, you want to coming in on the side as well. BDS are so much stronger. That's the unbreakable down now, though. As the second TP comes in, maybe the Orn can be the difference maker. The horn is blown. The fight is called. Multiple members knocked up, and now Noah trying to finish the job. Requiem coming down, but who's going to drop? LeBron still standing. Adam still standing. BDS managing to come out even in the fight, getting the Drake in the meantime. Fnatic burn everything, and they managed to get a couple kills. Not too bad. Fnatic really needed to start a fight sooner rather than later because they can't allow BDS to just keep running all over the map with this Cogmore Brahman taking every tower.
So, ends up in a two for two. They didn't get the dragon itself, but a couple kills makes it so they can start pushing out these lanes a little bit more. Flashes are down, which opens up options. The Karth has got his first ult in to get the first strike gold. And uh, we'll take a look at this one, because Fnatic definitely needed to fight this, and they committed very hard. Wunder arrived a little bit late, though. Yeah, I mean, the, the TP obviously doesn't make the engaging easier. Trippy takes a huge amount of damage beforehand. LeBron used the Unbreakable before, which meant that Wonder could get a good ultimate off, but the damage just wasn't quite enough. You can see the Carthus damage isn't quite as terrifying this early into the game. And it's only really when BDS are retreating that Fnatic are able to find themselves two kills. So credit to Fnatic, they're able to find something, but still, they lost a Dragon off the back of that. Mid tower is still incredibly low. Crowny has now been moved over to this area of the map. They can keep LeBlanc top. She still has the TP available with the Static Shiv. She's going to be a relentless side lane threat. Fnatic, they still find themselves on the back foot at about a 2.5k gold depth. A much needed play, though. It's good that they fought this one, waiting for the third and then losing that fight. The game's basically done because, you know, they'll have control for Soul. So he had to try and do something here. Um, going towards the Nashers, yeah. On the AP Kai'Sa. Both the side lanes are going to be a bit of a struggle. The mid push is also going to be a struggle. Herald up at 20. I can choose to fight that. The JSTP might be up in time to try and contest it. Reassigning their side lanes, though. Having the Jace up to their Nectin. Humanoid having a little bit more agency in that lane. Wonder certainly a bit of an easier time, at least uh, just clearing waves against the LeBlanc for now. This Duke's got the pressure on the top side. And I have to give so much credit once again to uh, the way in which BDS set everything up. Again, look at this vision. They were able to secure the top crab. They get this early vision in, and they also keep these wards in the bottom entrances of Fnatic's jungle. Even though Fnatic are strong side on the bot, they're pushing their vision in deeper to have some control over the river. And what happened, though, they back off BDS immediately in here, clearing this vision out. Now, the LeBlanc, knowing that she's on the weak side, playing a little bit more defensively, but because she has that vision, she knows that she can still look for trades and continue to push that wave. BDS are just a fantastic map set up right now to give them the freedom to continue to play these sides and just punish every window that Fnatic is leaving. Oh, LeBron, though. LeBron potentially caught out. Fnatic finding a window of their own. The Unbreakable now going down. LeBron, no way out of that one. Quick kill over to Razor. Fnatic firing back. So, as good as the discipline has been, one slip up from LeBron is immediately punished. See, gentlemen, this is how we keep games spicy. We just throw in a couple cast curses here and there, you know? The <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, so yeah. funny because my next point was about to be like, they're playing against a different caliber opponent. Excel, <laughs> Excel last week, very scrappy. Got sloppy in a lot of those games. And of course, yeah. <laughs> I was ready. I was there to support the curse. You didn't even need it. I mean, it was one solo of those curse. <laughs> yeah. But now look at this small window. This has given Fnatic so much reprieve. They're able to immediately move into the enemy jungle and look at the vision difference now. The bot side of the map has been lit up for Fnatic and they can actually start looking to play for this bot tower. The important thing is they're making plays to slow the game down. And if you push out waves, that means it's one less wave for them to play on, so it slows the game down. So they just need time. They need time to get Muramana, they need time to get Nashers and Rage Blade or Leandries, whatever Noah is going to build towards. They need time for the Carters to get more AP and then Fnatic can start to choose their windows. Well, now, the Herald is up. This should be an easy objective for BDS to take. They have the mid push, they have the top push, with the LeBlanc offering some support there as well. So this should largely be an uncontested objective. And this then sets them up nicely for the Dragon spawning in a minute's time. They can use this to guarantee mid prior if they want to. Okay, well, largely uncontested. Apparently, Fnatic are not a fan of that potential option here. It does mean the sacrifice in their bottom tower, but here comes the Ornhorn LeBron again, knocked up. Easy kill pick up for Fnatic. They're going to turn their attention right back to the Herald. Nuke covering in the area. Maybe gonna go for the cheeky steal here, but Razork will take it away. It's Fnatic such... firing back again. Yeah. It's a tough game save for Fnatic, but these mistakes make it so they can actually start to walk up. Nuke, does he get the grab? Oh, he's dashed quite far away. Razork's getting a bit chunked. Trying be in the area. Huge damage though from that LeBlanc already. They can't afford to make these mistakes, BDS. Needs to be more decisive. LeBron needs to make sure he's on the objective ready instead of trying to push them away from it, stopping them from being able to face check. But these kills are gonna come back to bite them because I think the Kai'Sa might have her second item in base. Gives them more wave clear. So uh, again here, the Brob should be around the pink area, you know, just queue them as they walk through into the river. He has to call his team for the jump, but then the Ornold's already coming out because the shield's down. And if they commit too deep here, Fnatic, to contest the Herald, the TP behind will come through. But now the Brob's already dead, so they have to back away. Credit to Fnatic. I'm surprised that they would choose to contest that, but they saw a window. They found that pick, and they converted it into something massive. And Kedra was talking a lot about earlier how Fnatic just want to slow the game down. This is a great way to do it. Question is, are they going to look to contest the dragon? And I think that they will. I would love an early card to salt, you know, just ult them as the dragon started. You know, you don't have to save it for later on. There's no dark well harvest. Now. Get the first strike instantly on there. Just ulting now or something for Razor would be nice, but they're going to force their way in. Here's Adam. Adam, not afraid to just paint. Check in. Nuke over the wall. First team going to miss. Command just connect, though. Big damage on to keep it on the backside. The Brock taking out Trippy. Easy fight. They're over the wall. The Cogba can just rain down hell. The Blast Cone. Keeping three members of Fnatic standing. BDS turning their attentions right back to the dragon. 
props to BDS. Duke especially came over the wall, chunked out Humanoid right at the start of the fight. He's able to land a good shock blast onto Crowny, but that's pretty much all that he could do. Meanwhile, Fnatic was somewhat scattered and funneled into this choke point, which made it so easy for BDS to herd them out and find two kills. This should be their third uncontested Drake. And that's going to put them in prime position for the soul. And that's exactly how the Herald fight should have gone as well. They should have been have to be funneling through a choke, and then that's when BDS can find their window. If they try to push them back or try to zone them away, Fnatic has a lot of tools to actually get picks with the hooks and the, and the Ornolds. So this is much different, much uh, better fight state for BDS. Nothing uh, Fnatic can really do with those flanks coming in. The added popping out it very early on immediately goes into the front line and Duke on the back line. This is kind of how Fnatic ended up fighting a fight on two fronts. And then the second that Fnatic are forced to retreat, BDS immediately capitalize and look for more. Huge credit, they played that very well. And now they've kind of reaffirmed, or reasserted rather, their control over the map. And credit will rob their four-man Braum ultimate in the midst of that fight after two untimely deaths in the previous exchanges, really making good on that one. Blast Cone really the only reason that Fnatic did not suffer more casualties in that exchange. Crown are going to do his best to take mid priority here and shift their attention up to the Baron. Cog obviously can shred through it pretty quickly, but a bit too early and not quite enough mana in the tank. BDS want to go for that one. The Baron is available. Of course, not going to be an objective that either of these teams start anytime soon. One of the things you have to consider, though, is Karthus, a very fast Baron taking champion. With the Herald, they're going to drop this in mid. They see a window and they're going to try and break open the map a little bit more. Fnatic continue to struggle. Yeah, wonder spacing. I think Fnatic are saying, we can't walk into this river. Let's just brute force down mid and try to get this tower. They won't get it, I think, but they'll get a big chunk out of it. Maybe they can use that to get vision, but this is the thing. Look at the side lane just coming in to collapse onto them. Don't really want to take that kind of fight. They already saw how vulnerable they are against flanks. Yeah, very limited. Ideally, you want Humanoid either matching the LeBlanc or matching the Renekton to kind of hold them at bay, and uh, all Wonder can really do is weather the storm. You can see he's a full level down on Adam. Uh, the map is just continuing to go in BDS's way. Every time they push in the waves, they move in, get that vision, make it easy for the side lanes to play. Adam grouping with the team to help them gain that control. Now they're setting it for the Baron. I'd be surprised if they started this one off now, but if nothing else, it'll give them an opportunity Kaiser. to find a pick. Yeah, Kaiser W is the only vision they can really get. Adam body blocking. Blue Trinket now forced out, none left remaining on the side of Fnatic. So they'll just continue to throw skill search in, trying to get information. Credit to BDS thus far, they have remained mostly in control of the game. They have to keep that diligence and that discipline up. These Fnatic are going to keep trying to force these plays. It's their only way back in. The observers, if we get an opportunity, can we see what Fnatic sees on the map right now? Because you'll notice that it is not a lot. And Duke is doing a great job of continuing to push in that top side of the map, and then BDS every time move back into the fog of war. They make Fnatic uncomfortable, make them feel like that they have to face check, and then Wonder is the one that has to walk in, and now you're very uncomfortable. You're not sure if the drag, the Baron is being started. It's not. But that risk, that potential overstep, gives windows for Crowning to then look quickly move back into mid, push that wave out, but it also constantly puts Fnatic at risk of getting caught. Noah's constantly forced to overgroup. He's losing experience, he's losing farm, and BDS are just continuing to build their lead. Now, Nearly, oh, it's pretty much 4k is the advance. And Humanoid bases, and you think maybe he's going to go, you know, to the bottom side of the map. So many creeps now have just died as this wave is just going to start to come in here and collapse. Now, finally, hopefully, for the sake of Fnatic, someone's going to be able to catch it, but they just have not been able to go to their bot lane once. They've been forced to stay on this top side just in case a Baron does get started. I mean, the good news for Fnatic is Humanoid has largely done a good job of keeping up with Duke. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see a lot of the goal difference between the two teams is sitting on Adam, which as you get later into the game is going to mean less relative to Renekton versus Orn, but that doesn't mean that Fnatic still find themselves in an easier spot. Gaining any sort of control is their greatest challenge right now. Yeah, the thing with Fnatic right now is one mistake, it's over. Like, they're gonna get a Baron, you can't face it, contest it, and that's just gonna break the Camel's back. They're like holding it right now. With, yeah. Like, the whole foundation is like sticks. They just need to keep it up. And they need to keep it up, because the longer they keep it up, the stronger it'll get. Uh, you can see they're getting towards Rage Blade. There's the Shadow Flame for Razork. As long as they can just slow it down, a couple more minutes is all they need. But it gets tricky. A minute away from Ocean Soul for BDS. And Fnatic are going to have to choose. BDS are going to have the luxury. They can take either objective, force Fnatic into a position where they have to decide no matter where BDS go, Fnatic are going to be forced to contest them. 
It's just so funny now. I was looking down at the, all the sweepers, the four sweepers on BDS inside, three blue trinkets on the yeah. side of Fnatic. Yeah, kind of the story of the game yeah, thus far. Really yeah. is, and yeah. three stopwatches on BDS. Now, you buy stopwatch against Karthus after the fight. You know, you use stopwatch when you're about to die. That's why I think Razor Green is the ult first, because stopwatch then becomes really hard to use in a sense. You know, you really aim it at things like the Nautilus ult or the Karthus ult. But if Karthus ult's instantly used as the fight's about to begin, uh, then it becomes uh, a lot trickier for the Kog'Maw. The damage is going to land. You're not going to stopwatch on 100% HP on a Karthus ult, yeah. right? And it's hard because there's so many of these crucial cooldowns that you want to force out from the side it's of the BDS. The Unbreakable as LeBron now steps in, a bit over eager, forcing out the Unbreakable early. Maybe gives an avenue for Fnatic to use the Ornn ultimate. They're not going to take it, however. Here comes the fight. Root over the wall. Trippy should be an easy pick up. Adam off to the side. Nice interrupt on the dash out there for Wonder, but he's just getting shredded by the Cog. So much damage coming in from Crowny. Rob ready to follow up. Nice footwork there from Crowny to get away from the hook as BDS can just set their sights now on the Ocean Soul. Don't have to risk anything to take this as Nuke just leaps in once again, lays down a bit of poke and goes right back out. Look at the poke that continues to come out from BDS. Cadrill talked about it in the draft and it's one of the struggles the champions like Carthus can have. This range the BDS keep throwing out the hook. Hook onto Adam. What else is it going to mean? Trimby just giving his life away to try to oh, get Razor that spike kicked off, but it does not matter. Razor in the midst of everybody. The undead Carthus. How much can he get done? Humanoid going forward. Down comes the space laser, but all of BDS still standing. Finally, no, we'll get one back. Wonder doing his best to hold on, but it is the only the 80 carry left. And this bee's going hunting a triple for Crowny as BDS turned their attention to the soul. Crowny basically took no damage in that fight, and the Ivern with the shield and the redemption and the utility is more than enough to weather the damage from Razork. The Carthus pick is not working out right now for Fnatic, and this was a desperation play. They were taking so much poke damage. The hook connects onto Adam, but it's Trippy that gets melted at the start, and then the flash in from Razor. Yeah, Razor trying to get as much damage down as humanly possible, but the redemption comes in. That redemption, that's on four people. Crowny does stop watch. It does 1.4k, I think, over the entirety of the fight when I check the item. And then Adam's on the lifts. Crowny's untouched. He's just walking around, walking past with this ghost on Cogmore, and there's really nothing stopping him once the Nautilus ult and hook is down. And the Brahm's just there to stop the Orn. So I feel like Lebrov and Crowny, just as this dynamic duo, this Kogmo Brahm throughout the series is going to be a problem for Fnatic. Certainly is. Redemption and Locket simultaneously in the previous fight to deny any impact from the Karthus ultimate. Now an Ocean Soul as well. So much of the poke from the Karthus, the Jace, the Kaisa is now just about completely nullified because of this soul, and if it was not already difficult for Fnatic, it certainly is now. I need a Serpent's Fang on this chase or something, because his shields are going to get so annoying, but Humanoid needs this Cyril, that's which I think he's building towards. You can see healing reduction coming in for the redemption from the last fight. But I think BDS are going to start this up. Fnatic don't yeah, have Yeah, he's just to bot. Yeah, he Wait, was in danger. He, he was in danger bot. top lane, so he TP to bot lane to get away to safety, and then BDS was like, uh, should we do Baron? Can they get this? Long walk back. Razor, no flesh. Nuke waiting off to the side, just looking for an angle. They're really just taking this one slow, letting Daisy tank. Crowny now starting to auto, 4k getting lower. Razork stolen before, can he steal again? A bit harder this time around. The Unbreakable now coming out a little bit early in the fight. Now comes the Ornhorn, but Crowny's just starting to shred through the entire team. Nuke on the backside, generating just a little bit of chaos, but the Fnatic backline still standing for now. All eyes on the Sablon. Can they find the angle back in? Fnatic, have they held the line? The Baron down now in the favor of BDS. What else can they get back? The answer is just about nothing. Three kills and a Baron. Razork doesn't have the ult up yet either, so. They're just so tanky, aren't they? BDS Adam just walks up with shields next to the Brov and they can't even get through that Fnatic. No flashes on anyone other than Trimby. So they can't close that gap and Nuke's just being such a nuisance, isn't he? Just constantly poking around onto Fnatic with this positioning here, just threatening them if they walk up. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward fight from BDS. The front line is acting as the front line. Crank is finishing off the Baron. He's like, okay, I'll hold now. And look, he's just completely untouched. A good ultimate from Wonder, but it's so difficult to follow up on. Noah is just awkwardly walking in the middle of the fight. He's like, Nuke is at my back, Adam is at my front. Should I ult in? If I do, aren't I just isolating myself for Crowny to then just melt me? How does Noah even play this fight? There's not really a lot of options, because no one else is going into that back line with you except no for the suicide <laughs> Karthus. And what are you going to do? You're going to ult into a Braum? That's your plan? It's hard. And Fnatic, I think, knew it was going to be hard coming in a draft. I don't know if they were ready for this Kog'Maw Braum, they, I mean, in draft, conceded so much of their early bot lane priority, and then, sadly, uh, top side as well, every single lane just kind of falling apart early on. Humanoid maybe uh, debatably opting to stay back, knowing that they didn't have any pressure, but this has been a tough game for Fnatic. The, sti the thing that stings me the most, if I'm cards in this game, is I have an AP Kai'Sa, a Nautilus, and an Orn. My whole, te whole team is AP, and yeah. I'm building these items, but I'm seeing malls, and I'm seeing items coming through with Magic Resist, and I'm thinking, Guys, uh, even though I'm power farming here and I'm getting up 
in, in XP or, or, or creep farm. I can't kill them. I'm just saying, what champion has a 17 stack Magi's right now? It is not the Karthus. <laughs> it is the Ivern. I mean, this, I, I'm, say, I'm just saying, these AP counter just picks. Facts, man. Just I'm just, facts. These are the facts. <laughs> One of these champions has a lot more AP from their Magi's. That's all I'll say. I mean, Shea has been involved in 11 of the team's 12 kills. Same for Adam. He's coming in. Fnatic, oh, potentially last desperate gambit. Nuke now coming in as well. They managed nice to lock Razzle up over the wall. Daisy now going over as well. The three. Ooh, two man knockup coming in now. Duke instantly follows up. razzlork has gone. That's the fight over. BDS can just shift their attention right back to the base. Requiem coming in, but it's just not going to matter. A Brom alt for Brom <laughs> now blocking the ultimate. They can't do anything. They're just walking away. The redemption is going to come in. The ocean souls for healing. The Karthus is dead. They're going to take over this base. Unbreakable used. Razork dead. BDS dominant in the early game. Fnatic found a few small windows of opportunity to keep it close for a brief extra minute. But the second that Ocean Soul came through, we knew the game was done and dusted. Fnatic, one last fight, but the stopwatch is still there, still up, still available. Crowny still untouched. There is no angle left for Fnatic to come back into this one. As they slowly but surely close out our game one. Confidence from the analysts predicting BDS. Seeing that confidence now rewarded after a flawless early game. Fnatic, though, trying to find a moment in the base, but Adam, eyes on the prize. Not gonna let himself get distracted by the juicy extra kill. Will just close out game one. Really well played from BDS. Answered everything that Fnatic threw at them, but I have to say, if I'm Fnatic, throw that whole plan out the window. Full AP with Karthus, Nautilus, last pick or something into this into this brown Cogmore. No early game pressuring lanes because your jungler has to power farm. They really dug themselves a hole in how many in terms of how many tools they can actually use to contest and win this game. And when BDS is such a strong dragon team as well, this is something I feel like you might have to match. For sure. I mean, I really think I'd love to know from Fnatic afterwards how much of these draft priorities they were expecting. You know, yeah. like the the Cogmore Braum is not something we've typically seen from BDS. Not to say that they've like never showcased. I'm I'm sure if we dig back far enough, you can find a crown shot game of uh, of a Cogmore, right? But not sure. something they've been playing recently. Nuke on the Blanc was not something that they prioritized. And Adam Renekton, sure, he plays that a lot. But I think that the the amount of pressure that they were able to put on the map in the early game was way more than what Fnatic were expecting. And the execution was just flawless from BDS. Huge props to them, because uh, they came in with a very clear game plan. They shut down what Fnatic wanted to do, and they executed falls. And they're in a tricky position where they so heavily prioritized their top side. And from Fnatic's perspective, maybe that was the right choice. But we've seen their bot lane just doesn't feel quite as flexible as what Crowny and LeBrov have been able to bring to the table. We talked about so many of the comfort picks Noah wanted to bring out. It was easy for BDS to ban a lot of those away. And if your backup plan is Kaisa Nautilus, again, into this Braum Kogma. That's just not going to cut it in a series like this. That's enough from us here at the Caster Desk cover. Let's send it back over to the analyst desk to get their thoughts on game one. I mean, we can pick it up right there, I think, as we get the, the draft on screen in just a second. Odo, um, we were kind of looking at the draft and talking through it, and uh, you tried to explain to me how a team usually drafts in terms of like, oh, if we don't have enough engage, we want 2.5 engage, at the very least 1.5, which could explain why they went for the not on R5. But all, overall, what did you think of the comp Fnatic fielded? Yeah, the thing is, I feel like when you get to not R5 there, no matter what Trimby picks, it, it's not going to work because I just think fundamentally the Cartus draft kind of fell through because if you are, if you have a if you have a champion like Cartus that he wants to AFK farm, at least when he gets to level six, you know you want the enemy team to feel some sort of pressure on their on their own lane. So for example, if you had the top laner swapped and you had the Renekton on the side of uh, Fnatic, then it would make a lot more sense because you know Renekton has a lot of pressure with the Cartus tool, lethal range is a lot uh, is a lot higher than usual and he could do a lot. But right now it's like I don't blame it at all on the Nautilus speak because I just think that you have three losing lanes with the Cartus that is not going to influence and he's not really like this strong ganking jungler at all. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest problem that we saw for Fnatic, especially even we saw Trimby trying to like flip it essentially in the bottom side of the map, but going like, hey, we don't really have great setup. We got to try and make something happen. So he flashes in and ends up giving over kills in the early stages. When you're playing into this problem, it kind of just sucks. You can see them hovering the Alistair. They were like, maybe we go Alistair, maybe we go Nautilus. They've realized they needed to engage, but it's never a good matchup in that bot side. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting because uh, contrary to what I do, to what you just said, the uh, shocks, uh, BDS has no engage whatsoever, yeah. <laughs> but they're the sort of comp where they, they're expected to be ahead uh, when it comes to, you know, the time when the team fights are going to start happening around Drake. So it's really, really easy for them to just 
sit and hold their control. The, the enemy team has to come and face check into a Brom Kogma and LeBlanc over the wall sitting on uh, sitting in fog of war. A Renekton that is there accelerated from early game because having he's having a really good matchup. So it's really, really hard for Fnatic to find this way to pull the trigger because they have this poke comp and they're walking into a wall, which is <laughs> uh, ironically, they have the Brom wall for the for the own ult. So Fnatic just doesn't have any tools whatsoever. Yeah, and you can see how effective it was when we got to those later dragon fights. Like, as soon as Fnatic try to come through any of the choke points into River, it's immediately Brahms in the way. You've got that ultimate coming up. Like, four or five people are being blasted by the Brahm ult every time they step in. There was just no hope for them. And then Kog'Maw is just free hitting. Like, when you've got the Ivern shields as well, I think they maybe took, like, a smidge of health off of Kog'Maw. And he's like, I'm right back up to full. We see why yeah. Ivern has been so popular indeed. And on top of that, Sheo is in the jungle as well, doing what he was supposed to do. And Ender's going to show you exactly what he pulled off. Yeah, I mean, the dude just walks into the enemy jungle always and puts down a pink ward that gets way too much value. Last week, it was the pink ward that lasted longer than Mad Lines at MSI. And here we had a pink ward that lasted for so long in the blue side jungle. So we can go ahead and play here as the powers that be can press play for me. Coming off the first reset, both junglers are running down towards bot side because they want Pryo on that scuttle crab. A, so that, you know, Fnatic can maybe put some pressure down on this bot side versus the, the bot lane from BDS. This is just giving the shove out. But Shio gets here first, can smite it away so it's an easy take for him and he places that pink ward puts uh, another ward here as well they just want to buy as much space as they can for the bot side so when both junglers end up going to clear their second uh phase of camps you know you get the top side crab can get taken down shio just sort of walks that that wave in on the bot side now he's seen going up towards top side so that makes razork think he can do something but this pink ward lasts forever the only time that pink ward is going to get spotted is the next blue buff spawn when uh when razork walks down there and BDS and Lebrov, they're pushing here even knowing Razork is on the bot side because they don't think a gank will work and it literally doesn't so they can keep putting down pressure and this goes to show what the desk was sort of talking about. We can press pause a second so I can catch my, my breath and, and speak. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that uh, the, the desk was talking about how there's no real lanes for Razork to play through so that he thought was his best bet knowing the enemy jungler couldn't be down there on that side of the map but it's really hard to do anything as this melee support into Brom Kogma matchup and that goes horribly 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 awry. This also leads into the idea that BDS are wanting to stack drakes. So the plan is off of this pink ward is they want to go for an invade. Let's go ahead and roll the clip out because that's exactly what Shio is going to do with the bot side prio coming off of this reset, right? Bot lane two versus two runs in here because the Nautilus isn't with the team. He's playing here for uh, wards and maybe a look in towards mid lane, but BDS can use that bot lane prio to try and catch out Razork when he goes into the blue buff. So Trimby gets out of here. They walk on in and even though it doesn't end up resulting in a kill, and Razork does get the blue buff. This is the idea that Shio is just constantly going to be applying pressure inside of the enemy jungle. Razork didn't really have an angle after that that he wasn't spotted inside a vision, and that is the BDS formula. That's the Shio that wouldn't let any enemy junglers get a gank off back in spring. So, Desk, to say the rest of the things about the game, I'm done. Thank you. Great. Catch your breath. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great point that Ender makes because... Uh, BDS loves doing this thing where the enemy where the junglers are matched on the same side of the map and even though we saw that it, all they did was like get the fight they didn't even get the blue buff but when they get this confirmation of where the enemy jungler is they are like okay it's really easy for us to go find them on the next play and match him again and especially with this BDS style of drafting that they have where they just draft winning lanes this game they had top lane winning I mean they had three winning lanes so that's you know this doesn't really usually happen all the time but the fact that they still have the style of finding enemy jungler just matching him just being annoying and being in his face to kind of feel like you know they're never mismatched you can't really find windows of opportunity to punish BDS all the lanes they're all smiling in their chair because you just you just get to play for free yeah, and uh, it's nice that they, as you say it, they have the winning lanes, but that doesn't mean they don't do anything else. Um, we talk so much about the dragon focus of BDS, and we wanted to look at it, specifically the setup for both, because I feel like the second dragon is where things could have gone awry, actually, for BDS. We'll start at pause, you two. Yeah, I mean, as we're coming into this, you're kind of seeing, okay, we've already got BDS ranked up all his five people, and, and Wonder's trying to make his way down into this position, but look how split up Fnatic are. Like, you've already got Trimby and Noah that are coming in on this bot side. You've already got the Jace and the Karthus that are trying to come in at the top end as well.
as well. Like in theory, it should be very easy for BDS to keep Fnatic separated, but because they all end up grouped up in the pit, it all goes a bit astray for them. Yeah, it's it, like this is the great approach for Fnatic. Everyone split up because BDS doesn't really have a lot of tools to pull the trigger. So if you manage to play with space like they do here, I would have liked to see the own TP a little bit earlier so they can buy a little bit more space. But as you can see, everyone from BDS is spread. They don't really have a lot of a lot of targets to focus because they don't have the lockdown. It's just like you know opportunistic to find the people who you can hit in front of you. And right now it's like fight happened on every front. They got AOE because Brom messed up and I think used the shield on something else. And Own gets a, a, a great engage. And this is best case scenario for Fnatic where everyone just stuck in the pit and they have all of the space to use while right now they're all just funneling through the choke. They didn't realize that the reason the fight before went so good is because BDS was already on the objective. They're, they were forced to sit in a, in a small area and right now Fnatic is walking in they don't have the tools. They're not stronger individually. Like right now we see Trimby Hook is just going to get burned because this is what the BDS comp wants to do. Just focus whoever's in front of you because you don't have a lot of setup. And also I guess good adaptation that they're out of BDS. They recognize this time we'll keep Adam off to the side. We'll make sure that we don't overcommit before we take the fight. Yeah, and I think as well being able to funnel Fnatic into that choke point made things significantly easier as well. Like you're playing with a Braum, you're playing with people that want to try and control space, even having the Renekton coming in on a flank. It meant that there was no real space for the backline to try and kite away. So when you're able to get into a position where Kog'Maw is able to free hit in that little choke point as you're trying to run back your tower, it just makes things so easy to get that DPS. Yeah, out. it was a well, very well played by BDS. Wonder check, quick wonder check. Yeah, I mean, the matchup went as expected. You yeah. know, you go even, the Renekton, he's just hitting the tower in front of you. And at the same time, the Renekton was set up for success because, I mean, he was kind of set up for success from Fnatic because when you pick Kartus, there's no threat on you. If there was like, I don't know, a kindred or something that has some sort of gang threat, you have to be respectful a little bit, maybe at level six, but right now it's like, he doesn't care for the whole game. Yeah, I think there was other things that were uh, the issue for Fnatic. We'll see if they can come back in game two after this. Go on, I'm looking at Kogma, Kogma, Kogma. Ah, IQ, IQ, IQ. Nice. Round one HP. Can I, sir? I blasted. <laughs> fight. Then engage, then engage. Yeah, okay. We can fight. Look, Dutchie's hooked me. He's yeah, done, he's done, Dutchie's done. Jess is one HP, Jess is one HP. Don't try to jump, don't try to take a plant. plant. We win this. Seeing that confidence now rewarded after a flawless early game. Fnatic, though, trying to find a moment in the base, but Adam eyes on the prize.